Hi folks, welcome. It's the 28th of August. What I'm going to do is, well I've got a couple of things to do, a couple of pots to make and a third pot to make and then I want to show you a couple of things that I just made just recently. So let's do it, yeah. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is, I'm just, I had this bottle you see that I acquired. I kind of like the bottle. There was something about nice about the bottle, I just liked it and I didn't want to just throw it away, you know. And um, it's just something rather nice about the bottle. It's got this rather nice sort of texture you see on the outside. and. I didn't know really what to do with it, but I just suddenly thought, oh, I wonder if I could, maybe I could use that as a paddle. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out. A bit of light on the subject, yes. Yeah, so let's do one of these uh, paddled expanded forms. Um, Yeah, this is 15 ounces of clay. So just gonna, you know, you know, with these uh, paddle pots, you want to throw them with the wall thickness a little thicker than you would than you would normally. You know, maybe we'll bring the camera just a bit closer uh, so you can get some detail. Let me just bring that in a bit. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So, yeah, so just going to break in here like this. And now just pull up a a wall my only concern with this bottle that I'm going to I'm going to use is whether the actual ribbing on the outside is actually is actually deep enough, you know, to, to create an impression that will be satisfactory. We will see. Yeah, so always when you're going to put a, an impression on the outside of a form, you want to stick it off, you know, to get it clean. Otherwise, you're just going to get a mixture of impressions. It's just an experiment, isn't it, really? Okay, so we're going to take this, we're going to, I'm going to wet it. A little water there. Put my hand on the inside. Now I'm going to make a lot of noise, because <laughs> this is glass. Put my hand on the inside, you see, like that. And now I'm going to, I'm going to smack the outside of this. Nah. 
it's not a very easy paddle to use because it's glass and it's kind of slippery and it's a little bit sort of heavy so I've not really done I've not really done a very good job of it and it is a little bit as I suspected not not really deep enough the, the The impression. So there you go. You see, you have, to learn, you have to make do experiments. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. So what I've done is I've used my throwing stick and I've kind of cleaned it off. I'm going to go over there, look for another paddle in my drawer. Why don't you come to? I'll go check my... I've got a drawer full of... Drawer full of paddles. Let's have a look. Yeah. That one. Yeah, maybe we'll try that one. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Maybe it's it's time for some corn on the cob. It's corn season. We need to It was already a bit thin, so it's so going to try to sort of true it up a bit now because it's like it's been in the wars a bit, you know. Just remember when you do this expanding, you can expand too much, you know, and then the pot kind of the wall sort of opens up. You know, it kind of like develops like a fissure on the outside, and then the wall sort of develops a gaping hole. All right, well there it is, we did it. It wasn't, it wasn't what we were expecting exactly, but... <laughs> there it is folks, hope you can see it. I'll put it down here, we'll get the camera out. And
Yeah, well, you know, these things sometimes they work better than other times, but I mean, it's. Yeah, we'll put a trimmed foot on it. So, the other thing I've got to do is somebody asked me to make a bigger tankard. Bigger, bigger. So I'm adding a couple of ounces to my regular, to my regular, my regular tankard is um, 15 ounces, which would normally make that size, which is in itself is not, it's a decent size. Um, this one is finished, it's ready to be sprayed with wood ash, that one. So I'm going to use that, keep to that same form, except I've added a couple of ounces, so we're now 17. And these were made, my regular tankards are thrown five and three quarter inches tall. I'm going to add now a bit of height and also a bit of breadth to the thing so it holds more. Let's see if we can do that. D. Yeah, it's a little order. I've been. I'll probably now, some people will say, Oh, Simon, can you make me a bigger one too? <laughs> Thing is, if you have a big, a big coffee mug, generally speaking, you see, the, the tendency is for people who are, are potters, My observation is, let's say, that people tend to make rather heavy pots and what we ought to be learning is how to make pots a little lighter, you know. It's not that they've got to be featherweights, but I mean, you know. So it's just thinking, you know, with a bigger cup of tea or coffee, you know. Well, if you've already got a mug that weighs, it's a bit overweight anyway, then you've got a full cup of coffee or tea or whatever you're going to put in there. Then you could be ending up with something that's pretty heavy. Um, So I'm pulling to get a bit of height, you see, immediately. Because we can always belly it out, can't we? We're already up to five and a half. So let's go down into the bottom of the pot and pull up some more. going to be a big cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's up to five and three quarters and it's already quite a bit bigger than the other one. Of course you've got to allow for shrinkage. Oh yeah, we've got a bit of shrinkage that we have to do. I'm going to put the collar on the top here, or the lip rest. Sort of, it is a lip rest and it is a collar. 
and that it has an aesthetic function it has a practical function keeps the top of the pot round stops it now that's looking a little bit wide at the top now for my liking just going to bring it in a touch you do the collaring move you see don't let your pots get too wide at the top It's difficult, you know, when support gets too wide to get it to get it back in again sometimes, you know. You have to wrestle with it a bit. Wrestle wrestling with the clay. Are you a wrestler? That's what it feels like it feels like sometimes, isn't it, when you're on the wheel and you're kind of feels like you're literally you're wrestling. Feels like you're in this sort of in this sort of titanic struggle to all right. So this one's got some, as you can see, natural throwing lines there, rings on it. And that's up to over six and an eighth now. Sixth and an eighth. I think that is going to be going to wipe my hands because I'm going to put down the other one beside it. Put this other one down there beside it. Are we in the picture? It better be after all this talk. <laughs> okay, so that is that one. Now that is the other one, you see. So yeah, that's, that's pretty, that's a decent size. Um, just fetching this example of a, a piece that I've showed you before. Uh, I keep it though, just as a. I keep it just as a to show people. This is what you should be aiming at. You see, with your pots. Now, bear in mind, this pot is not not been trimmed. This is thrown like that. So that's what you want to aim at to be able to throw your pots. So you have a cross section which is something like that, roughly an eighth of an inch, you see. And that gives you a pot that's not too heavy, which is what you want. Okay. Yeah, um That will do, I think. Do it for one, anyway. Can't remember, did I leather it? I don't even know where my leather is. My leather has disappeared. Oh well, it's all right, it doesn't look too bad. All right, let's just cut him off before we do that. Ah, oh, there's the leather. There he is. All right, leather. Sponge, cut off wire, with the wheel going slowly, keep the, the wire taut down on the wheel head and just pull straight through like that, okay? That's all you have to do. A lot of people have problems lifting their pots off the wheel. The, the problems don't originate from the fact that it's it's difficult to lift a pot off a wheel, it's just that they're just not taught how to do it. And it's not difficult. Clean hands, a twisted cut-off wire like this, and just clean the underside of the pot with your, your throwing stick down here, the bottom section. You'll be able to lift that off like that, easy. 
and that's not a, a thick wall pot, you know. Ah. You know, I told you a moment ago about, you know, be careful with those, those, um, those, the, those pots. If you open them up too much, they can open up a fissure. Can you see what's happening on the outside of that one? You see, that's because it was already, look, there's another hole up there, see? You see? Now, if I'm not, if I don't do anything, with that right now, that's just probably just going to open up further and further and eventually that pot will collapse. There's something I can do though to stop that happening. That is... Just give it a little... A little flame like this. It should at least stop it from collapsing further. says he and now I'm looking at it it looks, looks like it's getting worse in fact <laughs> see that oh dear we've got a problem we? well it, it, gets, it gets to a point where you physically got to touch it and sort of perhaps push it back together a bit you know That pot's going to be a bit touch and go anyway. A bit touch and go. Alright, let's quickly... No, maybe I won't do another one because we're good. I wanted to show you a couple of other things. Um... Oh, excuse me a minute. Hello? Yeah, is that Jonas? Yeah, it, I, I wanted to get a message to Elias if he could give me a call because one of the bearings for one of the wheels that uh, he, they supplied the, um, the parts to, the top bearing, well there are two bearings, one of them, one of them does not line up, it's not been pressed correctly into the outer casing and it's skew whiff so the guy he needs another another bearing and I've got the address I wanted Elias to give me a call if he could and then I can give him the address yeah okay that'd be great appreciate that thank you very much yeah bye bye oh that's my Amish guy who does my does my wheels and um, he yeah one of the wheels that we sent out last year uh, the um, the the bearing the top bearing it wasn't there was something wrong with it you see so the guy contacted me so I'm trying to get him a new bearing sent to this chap this guy anyway these are things that happen, aren't they? Uh, I just wanted to show you these anyway quickly. Bring the camera down. I think what I might have done. I, I, I was doing one of these actually on a video short. Or oh, both of these actually, now I think about it. There's a short there of me doing, fiddling around with this. I trimmed this guy. This is a little bowl you see, just I, I just threw and um, then um, um, made it go wavy, you know, when it was soft. And um, it's uh, yeah, I did a trim. I trimmed it in in one of those short short videos. That was one I did, and then I did also for those people who've already seen it. Forgive me, you just have to bear with me. But I was doing um, a bird pot. 
I think I'd spoken about it, I showed you a photograph on my iPad and this was my interpretation of a bird pot. Um, a couple of feet there, sort of rather fat little squat, but I was kind of pleased with it. It was sort of simple, simply done. It wasn't that very, it wasn't difficult to do. So there we have it, the bird pot and the the star bowl, I guess you call it. Uh, I've got another one up here, another bird pot, which is uh, sort of like in the form of a small pitcher, you know, um, kind of idea. Altered form, you know, this is what we call this kind of work, isn't it? Altered forms. So you can throw and then alter by squishing it, basically. So there we have it. Thank you folks for joining me today and I'm going to press on. I've got another another tankard like that to make. I'll make a couple. If anybody's interested in a larger style tankard, get in touch. All right. Well, without further ado, we will say keep practicing. We'll see you around town. Bye for now. Dee 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 dee.